if you talk to people with paralysis, it's their number one priority. They want to restore hand and arm function even above, they prioritize that above the ability to stand and walk again. Here's how it works. An implant is placed on the brain above the motor cortex. AI in that implant deciphers intent to move arms, hands, fingers, then relays that information wirelessly to another implant in the body, so bypassing the damaged spine. AI in that implant triggers the right muscles to actually make those movements. They call this thought-driven movement. Dr. Jocelyn Block performed the surgery. We remove a little bit of bone. We replace this piece of bone by this set of electrodes, and then we close the skin. This implant is going to work wirelessly and activate the spinal cord stimulation. Her partner, a neuroscientist, first had this sci-fi idea years ago, then waited for tech to catch up. If you are paralyzed with your hand and you can just open and close, it's a huge change. Suddenly you can eat, you are gaining independence. The change in the activity of daily living is dramatic. This is why this new project is so exciting. We met Bloch and Gregoire Cortine in July to discuss their previous project, another world first, fitting a similar device to this man who lost the use of his legs after a bicycle accident. Now the, the implants are able to capture my, uh, my thoughts of walking and able to transfer to the, to the stimulator in my uh, lower back. But they say restoring arm and hand function is actually harder. It's more refined, especially if we want to extend the restoration of movement to the fingers and not just the arms. So help them grasp something or help them use individual digits. While it is still too early to provide full results, Onward told us, we are pleased to report that the technology works as expected and appears to successfully reanimate his paralyzed arms, hands, and fingers. We'll learn a lot from that first person, then we'll expand to four or five people, and then if that goes well, we'll conduct a global pivotal trial and hopefully get FDA approval and make it available. A lot of work still to be done for sure, but they, with these trial surgeries, have proved this can be done. Something many people thought was impossible, restoring movement after a spinal cord injury. One legal ethicist told me so many people could benefit from this that we have an ethical imperative to continue this research.